Our max consumption is getting real close to our max capacity, but that's not the only problem. We ran out of wood and leaves that end up being converted into our solid biofuel right here. So pretty soon we are going to run out and our power will stop. So we need to unlock coal power. So we'll do that by going to tier three, clicking the coal power milestone, and then we are going to give it the items that it requires and send them off. Now, a typical coal power setup will include eight coal power generators and three water extractors, assuming you don't underclock or overclock anything. And then you can scale from there. Each coal generator requires 15 coal per minute. And so if we feed that into eight coal generators, that means we need 120 coal per minute to function those eight coal generators. Now, where we are going to set up our coal, there is four normal nodes. So four times 60, which gives us 240 coal per minute. So we are able to double that setup to give us 16 coal generators. And each coal generator gives us 75 megawatts of power. So if we have 16 coal generators and they give us 75 megawatts of power each, that gives us a total of 1200 megawatts of power. That more than quadruples the amount of power we're currently producing and it's all automated now if we place down a coal generator here we'll notice that each coal generator takes 45 cubic meters of water per minute and so if we have 16 of these we need 720 cubic meters of water per minute and if we have a look at the water extractors here we'll notice that each one does 120 per minute we'll need a total of six water extractors so let's have a look at what we need here for those 16 coal generators we need six water extractors and 16 coal generators but even just without taking into account the copper sheets it requires a lot of reinforced iron plates and rotors in order to do those 16 coal generators and six water extractors. So we'll see how many we have made there already. We'll grab some plates to do some foundations. We'll make sure that we also have a couple stacks of iron rods with us. And then we'll grab all the rotors and reinforced iron plates that we currently have already produced and we can see here that we're still quite far away from our goal we could do half of the setup and come back and then grab the extra things but since again we are running out of solid biofuel our power is not going to last that much longer and so if we wanted to do it that way we'd have to go and cut down some trees and fill these bins up and there's nothing wrong with doing that. There is something else we could do though, and that is utilize the awesome shop. So let's go and look at how many tickets we have currently. We already have 15 coupons, so we can just print them and grab them. And something you can actually do is head into the awesome shop here. And if you go to the parts tab, you can then go and grab whatever you might need. So in our case here, if we feed it three coupons, we could grab an extra 100 rotors, which would give us pretty much what we need now at the start of the game you produce quite a bit of coupons real fast but you want to be careful here and not overdo this because you'll want to actually unlock other things that are very crucial to make factories but since i don't want to wait i'm going to go ahead and do this but you don't have to do it if you don't want to and once you purchase them if you forget to grab your things and you exit out, like I do this all the time, you can always go back to the awesome shop, go to the purchase tab and grab your items. Before we do anything else though, we'll want to grab whatever solid biofuel we have made here. We can see here we're no longer producing them, so this is all that we have. So we'll just add them to the biomass burners. We don't have that much more time here, but that's okay. Once we're gone, it doesn't matter if the power stops, we are not coming back here until our coal power is set up. So something else we need over there though is four miners. So we'll go and add this to the list and we'll go ahead and craft these miners right now. The other things we are going to need is some copper sheets. We are going to need quite a bit of copper sheets here. So I'm gonna bring five stacks 
Now, before we go, I want to make sure here that I grab a couple things from the awesome shop that I think we might need. And only if we have the tickets. We do seem to have some tickets here. So I'm going to go and add the conveyor lift floor hole and the wall outlets. And finally, some modern catwalks. Now, we need some way of going vertically. And I typically use catwalks for that but you could do the ladder the stairs so we'll just head on over to the cart and buy all the items now we'll just go grab a little bit more concrete here probably a total of four stacks hopefully will be more than enough and we're gonna see here how many reinforced iron plates we now have so now we have enough here for those coal generators but we will also need some for the mark ii belts so we'll need to grab some extra just in case and we'll grab the other rotors so now we have everything we need to create those 16 coal generators and we can then start heading that way and not worry about it there is something though that i forgot to add and that is we will need some form of power to kickstart the system and so we just want to make sure to add three more biomass burners in our to-do list over here but it sounds like we already have enough so we should be fine just make sure to top up our wire here just in case i have a full stack of that so where we want to go is towards the east to the location that's between the rocky desert and the northern forest so we'll grab the power from our quick wire facility here we'll want to make sure to go towards the right here and avoid the po the poison and where we're heading is right here in the opening if we scan for coal you'll see that the nodes are right here in front of us so we'll head towards the coal nodes and the coal nodes will be right here to our left. Ah, oh, there's a pale berry. We actually need this. We haven't found some yet in our playthrough. Here are these coal nodes are guarded by four hogs. So you want to be slightly careful here. But at the end of the day, these are hogs. Puny little hogs. Look at that. It can't even roll off without completely stunning itself. Now that we're here, we'll start by putting down a platform four meters high, snap to the grid on these nodes somewhere around here. Don't want to go too high up here because if we go too high, we're not going to be able to add our miner on the node. So in our case, it fits just perfectly on it. So if you want to look at how high you want to just cover this node here, the one that's more towards the east. And then this second node, however, will be higher than the foundation, but that's fine. It's not a big deal here. We'll add a miner on each one of these nodes, and they'll both be facing towards the east. And we'll give both of these some power. So place a, a power line here. And then we'll connect back towards the main basis power like so. Now you'll notice when you place down the foundations on the world grid, you might not line up perfectly with the miners and that's fine. You'll have to adjust them when they go into the merger. So we'll just add a merger somewhere around here here with the output going towards the water over there and then we'll place a mark one belt from each one of these miners into this merger now the reason we're doing that is because as you remember each set of eight coal power generators require a total of 120 coal per minute so by merging two lines of 60 into one we now have a line of 120 and from here we'll build a foundation platform all the way towards the water and just like that the power went out so we'll add a storage bin here and we'll belt a mark ii line actually from this merger into this storage bin now this line here will be 120 per minute so the power did go out and that is something 
we expected. So now we can go ahead and remove this line right here. The one that's going back towards the main base. What we are going to do is from this point on will be our coal power generator setup all going into this one pole. And then when everything's up and running, we then connect this pole into this one in order to send the power back to the base. But that way we won't have issues with the power going up and down and risking blowing the fuse. And this will actually help us if we everything goes into this one pole here this will help us later on with the new priority switches and segregating every part of our factory into different power grids but that's a topic for later when we unlock that one now let's do the same thing but for the second area now want to bring power with us this time over to this side we'll follow the cliffs here and we'll get to a point here where there is two more coal nodes now we'll do the same thing over here we're going to cover these nodes up as best as we can i'm going to just zoop one foundation over here so that i can line these up good and we'll leave it like this so that we can then bring this line down here and merge with this miner and this is what it should look like when you're done setting it up so first we'll want to put these two miners down and then we just belt using mark one belts from both miners into a merger right here with its output going towards the east or towards the lake now the belt coming out of the merger is going to be a mark ii belt but we'll be doing that one later you don't have to worry about it just yet and you'll want to make sure that you bring the power to both of the miners so now that we have all four of these miners set up we can then go ahead and create a platform for our coal generators now what we're going to do is just line up the platform over there and we'll bring it all the way here and we'll see there's a one meter drop here so what we can do here is delete all of this and now we can bring it towards the water and we can just add a one meter ramp here and bring this down and then we could get rid of this now there's an easy way and a hard way to do your coal power and what i'm going to be showing you is actually the easy way and later in the series we'll be setting up a more complex version now the easy way is to get as low as you can to the water now of course this only works if you have a lot of water to deal with but if you don't have a lot of water and you only have a little bit you'll want to actually build your factory off of the water so a coal generator needs a platform of five wide and we got we're gonna want to run it down here on top of this water let's go ahead and place down a coal generator here just so that we can see what we're dealing with so yeah see the coal generator takes about three foundations wide and then We'll use one behind it for the logistics and one in front just for some space. Now, if you wanted to match that, you could add another one, a six one. And that way you have logistics and you have a space of one around the entire setup. So maybe we'll go ahead and do that since we do have a lot of room here. And we'll just bring this down. I don't want to bring it down too much because we're going to run out of mats here. But, uh, but this is a good start. This platform, like I said, could be on top of the water. I've done it before where we've cleared over this arch so that you have the entire room here you could place it wherever you want it doesn't have to be on the water it just simplifies your life just a little little bit then we're going to add a foundation underneath this one and then just run it across now hopefully we'll have to test this hopefully this is low enough let's just add a little bit here and we'll try to add a water extractor and it does work now the reason you want to do that is so that if you look at a water extractor by default it'll go pretty much anywhere you can't snap to anything but if you add it on top of foundations you'll start noticing that okay yeah we can start snapping to the foundation and that allows you to 
really pinpoint exactly where you want to place your water extractors. So we just want to bring it back. We want to be able for the pipe to clear. We'll do it somewhere around here. And what that will allow us to do here is if we add a pipe, we won't be clipping on any of the foundations. So we won't do anything yet, but we will go ahead and remove some of these. We're actually going to remove most of these here. We'll leave one row for now, and then we can just hold control and place down the second water extractor. Now it's time to start placing down some coal generators. So our line will be coming in this way and then running the back way over here. We'll add an extra column here of foundations and we'll place our coal generator and we'll line it up so the belt part is in the middle. See, it's right in the middle of this foundation. Add a splitter, having it come from this side over here. And then we'll add a Mark 1 belt going into the first coal generator. Then we can grab this coal generator here and we're just gonna go ahead and add eight for now. So one, two, three, four. We'll hold that control button. Five, six, seven, eight. And then we'll notice that we need it roughly 10 foundations wide for these eight. So we'll make sure we have another 10 here. So right now we have six. So we'll go ahead and add another four. Now, if you run out of mats, go ahead. You, you could go back if you want to. Hopefully you brought enough though. And we're just gonna go ahead and add the other eight now. So we do have the one extra. So I guess we only really needed nine more. So that leaves one extra on the side, just like we have over there. So that's nice. We can have them come in here. And after clearing the two mobs here, we can go up and grab this power slug. And then we'll want to bring this foundation over. Now, I like that we can go right underneath the arch. I swear I did not plan this. <laughs> it's like right in the middle, dude. It's so beautiful. See, sometimes it just works out perfect. So from here, we can bring a Mark II belt. We're going to quickly run out of them though we'll add a splitter making sure the input's coming in from the left hand side here we'll line it up with the first with the first coal generator and we'll do the same thing here with pretty much all of these the one you would want to do though we want the first eight will have the input coming in from this side and then the next eight will have the input coming in from the other side so one two three four five six seven eight so another two Okay, now we don't really need a splitter on this side. So over here, we could just have it come right here and into the last one like that. Onto the other side now, we'll add a splitter with its input coming in from the that side. So they're coming in like that. That's the side that has the orange outside here, if you're wondering. And we're coming in here and we're going to keep going down here, lining up each one of these coal generators. Oh, this one, we don't need one because we could just belt into it. Now, that's a preference if you want to just use belts or do another splitter. I most of the time just add splitters because it's easier. Later on, if you do some blueprints, it's just a lot easier if everything has splitters because then you could chain the blueprints. So that's why I typically do splitters everywhere. Now we'll just finish up adding lines from each one of these splitters into over there. Even though you only need Mark II belts for the first few coal generators, I'm going to run a Mark II belt all the way down, especially when it comes to coal power. So these guys are done. Before we go back to base, I'm just going to add a storage bin real quick. And we're going to go and add pretty much every building material that we got here. And we're going to start heading back to base to go grab whatever we are missing. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of leaves here. And we're just going to gr craft what we can in solid biofuel. 30 or 40 solid biofuel. Just so that we can cut trees on the way back to base. These trees are not really meant for now. They will be used to kickstart the coal setup. Can also add a marker here if we wanted to show our coal power. So 
So here you can give it a name. You could change the icon, the color, and the marker distance is how far you'll actually see it in your compass at the top of the screen. So I'll set this one to infinite for now, which means no matter where you are, you'll see it. All right, and now that we're back at base, let's go see if there's anything that has been crafted. We have 56 rotors. Not that we really need those right now, but what we really care about are these reinforced iron plates. Now that's still technically not enough reinforced iron plates. So what we'll want to do here is just grab a few stacks of iron plates and screws. And we'll be setting up an assembler in the meantime back over there so I could craft some more reinforced iron plates. Now back at base here, you could leave these solid biofuels in here. I'm going to grab these solid biofuels that are in here and bring them with me. And we'll place down what we don't need in our storage container. While we're here, we'll want to grab some extra cables and we'll start heading back. All right, back here, we're going to grab everything that's in our storage. We'll actually take away the storage. Now we are going to need some biomass burners to kickstart the system later. So we might as well put them down now. But right now we're actually going to use them to add an assembler and start crafting some more reinforced iron plates while we're over here. And while we're finishing up the coal generator setup, because we're going to need more reinforced iron plates and we might as well have them being done here while we're here. So we have six water extractors total and each one requires 20 megawatts of power. So that means we need 120 megawatts of power and we have four miners with a total of another 20 megawatts of power. So we need 140 megawatts of power. Biomass burner does 30. So we need roughly five biomass burners. So here we have a platform of two by two and another one here and that should be more than enough. So we'll do a biomass burner Add a biomass burner right over here. And then we'll line them up like this. And going to add some power to all of them. And then eventually it will connect to this pole right here, which connects all those miners and then eventually over there. But for now, what we can do is because we need an assembler, we'll actually add another two by two here right next to it. And we're going to place down an assembler. Now we should have the items for that. And we'll connect all those biomass burners just to this assembler. And from there, we can just add our iron plates and screws. And if we really wanted to here, go the extra mile. We don't really have to do this, but if we really wanted to here, could add two storage containers and just add our screws in one of them and add some plates in the other one. And then here we could add another storage box. Now this is overkill. We will be removing this. We just need this right now to keep producing some reinforced iron plates for us. And then we can use the solid biofuel or craft some and just put them in here. And while we're at it, I will temporarily remove this line here for this one miner and connect it to the solid bio to the biomass burners too. And the reason for that is we could then start collecting some coal in here to help kickstart the system. We'll head back to our coal here. We'll just go ahead and add a couple more foundations like we did for the other one. And we'll do the same thing here. So we'll try to line it up the same way we did with the other ones here. Something like this. I think that's pretty close. Yeah. It's not if it's not perfect, uh, it doesn't matter. It's just me being picky. And then we'll hold control and place our second one. So now we have two on this side. We have two on that side. And eventually we'll want two in the middle. Yeah, roughly this is our middle. This line here in the foundation is our middle. So in our case, what we'll want to do, might as well just add foundations here. We'll want to make sure here that that ladder does not cross the middle and it lines up with the other ones. So somewhere around here. Yeah, see our ladder stays our ladder stays on that side of the middle and then this one stays in that side. So I just noticed something while placing these and uh, and that is as we're short a generator and I was trying to figure out why the gap was bigger here than over here if these guys are in the middle. And the reason for that is 
we're actually short one on this side. And I think it's because I was lining it up to here and I never added the other one on this side. So what we'll want to do here then is just redo this. We'll actually add it from here and we'll move these two guys over. Like so. There you go. So now we've got a gap here and we still need to add our other one here. So we'll add another little column and then we'll add another one here and this one will be coming in right over here into the splitter now we'll have to change this splitter to be facing the correct way and then we'll add mark one belts for both of those into the coal generators so now going to have to just move this line over once the foundations have been brought all the way back here we are going to move the storage box and then move all the coal from the first storage into the new one. And then we'll delete the old storage and then move the Mark II belt from this merger into the new storage. Now, to properly kickstart the system, we'll want to get 1600. So we'll make sure to get another row or some. From here, hopefully we have enough to make it to this, which we do. So we're going to belt into this splitter right here. And then we're going to start adding Mark II belts down the main manifold line here like this. So the first one is fully set up. Get to add a Mark I belt here to this coal generator. I do do it later for the coal and now all we have to do is set up the piping the way we can do this we'll remove this last belt just temporarily and we'll add a pipeline support in front of the entrance here and we'll bring it as high as we can go now the reason we do that is because you want to connect a pipe into the machines from either equal or higher you don't want to bring them down from the bottom because that can create backflow and there's some issues with that if you're feeding them from below i'll have a video coming out on the why that's a problem but for now just know that you'll want to try to feed them from the top as best as you can or to the very least from the same level you don't want pipes feeding from the bottom so now we'll grab our pipe section here and we're just going to bring it pretty much as far as it goes and place it directly on top of the splitter and then we'll do the same thing here we're just going to go further than it needs to go and we'll bring it all the way up then we have this one pipe fragment right there. Now, what you'll want to do is add a pipeline junction cross on here for every coal generator. You'll want to hit control and it'll snap to the coal generator entrance just like this. Now, if it's not rotated right, use your mouse wheel here to rotate it so that it looks like this. And then you'll want to go and do that for every coal generator. And now from these junction crosses, we'll, you'll want to bring them into the coal generator here. And you'll notice you probably won't be able to do it if you did it exactly like me. So if the pipe is running directly in the middle of the foundation, but what you can do is hit R and you'll switch between the different build modes. And one of them will be noodle. And then it'll do a nice turn here and it'll work. And you can keep doing this like that. Just finish adding all of the pipes into the coal generators. Now, when you get to this point, this segment we don't need anymore. So we can go ahead and remove it. And it could just end like so. You can then run the belt into this last coal generator like so. So now your coal generators are hooked up to a main pipeline. And what I like to do is once you unlock the customizer, which we already did, and I like to mark my pipes by the content of what's in the pipe. So since these have water, I like to color these blue. And this just gives an extra pizzazz to your factory. And it's also convenient. You'll be able to know, okay, these pipes hold water. 
right now it might not seem like a big deal, but later on you'll have multiple pipes dealing with multiple types of different fluids and this comes in handy. So now again, we can remove the last one. Now that this is done, we'll want to start, we'll want to add the water extractors to our system here. We'll add another junction cross. This time we'll have to manually eyeball it. Put it here. It should be after the two first pipe connectors here. It should be in the middle of the second and third. And then we'll add a connection like this. Now, if you want it to look nicer, what you could do here is set the build mode to horizontal to vertical. Because we have this foundation, it's going to do that, which is not great. So if you start from here instead and you go into there, then it's going to have the bend at the end here and this will be better. So now we'll go another two, one, two, and then we'll place it in the middle of here. Again, we'll try to eyeball it being directly in the middle as best as we can here. And then we'll start it from here and head into the extractor again. Now, what we're trying to do here is add the water extractors to be at properly spaced out so that they don't oh, so that they don't go over the capacity of one pipe at a time. And the way to figure this out and the way you figure it out is mainly by trying to figure out some math. So we know that this one provides 120 into this pipe. So it'll split into two. So 60 will go in here. And since this requires 45, there's an extra 15. So 15 with this one. So 75, 75 goes here and 45 goes into here. And then it sends another 30 down this way. 120 goes here, 60, 60. 60 goes in here, 45 goes in there. And then the extra 15 merges with the 30 that was here and heads into this one. As long as you never hit a more than 300 in a pipe, you'll be good. You'll be good to go. So now that we have the three pipes connected, all we need to do is color these guys again. I, I like to color these guys too. Why not? Well, I had these to be a monstrosity that is yellow. <laughs> uh, and then uh, just because why not we're gonna do red over here just to make these nice colors pop this one is is done all that we have to really do now is add some power to them so we'll just connect all of our coal generators and our water extractors just like so and there you go this one is done and set up so the other one, we just have to do the exact same thing. Set up the pipe like we did it and set everything up the same. And there you go. So now that we've done this side also, we need to bring back the power and belts. So we might, hopefully we have enough Mark II belts here. Now again, if you don't have enough belts, you, you can manually craft it or you can head back to base and grab some items to manually craft it. We're so close here that we don't really care about manually crafting a couple more items. So first, let's see here. Okay, we've got 85. This should be close to being able to finish. So there's a few things you'll wanna do here to kickstart the system. We're going to grab pretty much as much as we can here. We, you pretty much want one stack per coal generator. So we have 16. So you want to have 16 stacks. You don't need to do this, by the way, but it does help. And okay, we do have enough. So we'll head back here. We'll add a Mark II belt from here and we'll just have it go about right to here so that we can line it up with this belt perfect so now this is going to go down here and start loading the we're going to start loading the coal generators we we'll want to kick start the miners so we have the one working and all these guys will produce will kick start the mines miners so we can now add the miners right here we're still not connecting the coal generators yet. I fixed this issue later, but make sure that your belt between the merger and the storage is a Mark II belt. So now we'll just head on over to the coal generators and we're going to dump all the coal stacks that we have into these coal generators. This is how you, you kickstart your coal generators to avoid issues. 
they don't need to be full but to prevent some towards the middle to turn on and off until the whole line is saturated you'll want to make sure that they all have a full stack here so whether that be you adding them in there or you just starting the miners only before anything else whichever way you choose to do it you want to make sure that the coal line is full so if we did everything correctly and that's a big if we should be able to connect this line to this line and the water extractors will start turning on in sync look at that now the water is struggling so what i typically do here you could go to these coal generators and turn some off on either side here you don't need them all to be off you just need a few to be off and what that will allow to do is fill the water so the reason we want to do that is just to make sure that these water lines fill up and then we let it do its work and eventually after a few minutes now it equaled itself out this process can take a little bit and if you want to speed up the process you can just turn the whole thing off and sometimes i'll do that like we've got steady power and the pipes are slowly filling up but if you want to make it go faster you could go ahead and turn everything off and we're going to do the same thing on the other side here now it goes quicker by turning everything off so i do suggest you might as well just turn everything off and everything will go a lot quicker and that sound is the sound of the water extractors getting full and turning off and once they're off, we can go ahead and turn on all the coal generators and everything will be fully functional. And then we'll notice that we're providing enough water here and coal so that it always stays perfectly full and that all these machines are now full and working at max capacity and max efficiency. If we go look at the water extractors, we'll notice that it doesn't really get it'll keep hovering around those same numbers here. And just like that, we're producing the 1200 megawatts of power. Now we can beauty this up and we probably will in the future, but for now it's doing exactly what we need it to do. And now we can go ahead and get rid of our assembler over here. Also gonna get rid of everything here. We can leave the biomass burners here. It doesn't really matter at the grand scheme of things. We can just delete this. So now we can then go ahead and connect our main factory to this pole here. And we'll have to pull this up. And just like that, we have a ton more power to deal with back at home. And our factory is now back online. Now, if you're wondering how much power you're going to need, you're going to need a lot of power. And we're going to need to build at least one more of these setups. But we won't need to do that just yet. And that's it. Back at our base now. We can see the nice new red. Because we set it as our default factory color over here. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, do leave a like and consider subscribing. And maybe share with your friends. I'd like to get this series out to as many people as possible. To help as many people as possible. And I've also added channel memberships. For those who want to go that extra mile, I have started uploading some behind the scenes footage of a new playthrough I'm doing with no foundation. So if you want to see that, you can click the link down in the description down below. Until next time, stay safe.